Lent's daily devotional for uh, Holy Wednesday. This is, um, we're going to continue in the Gospel according to Mark chapter 12, and we're going to start with the first verse. This is commonly known as the parable of the tenant farmers. Jesus spoke plainly to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a tower. Then he rented it to tenant farmers and took a trip. When it was time, he sent a servant to collect from the tenants his share of the fruit of the vineyard. But they grabbed the servant, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again, the landowner sent another servant to them, but they struck him on the head and treated him disgracefully. He sent another one, that one they killed. The landlord sent many other servants, but they struck him on the head and treated him disgracefully. disgracefully. Now the landowner had one son whom he loved dearly. He sent him last, thinking, they will respect my son. But those tenant farmers said to each other, this is the heir. Let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. They grabbed him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. So what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it's amazing in our eyes. So they wanted to arrest Jesus because they knew he had told the parable against them, but they were afraid of the crowd, so they left him, and they went away. Now this parable um, is just another in the line of Jesus trying to make people mad on purpose. (laughs) He um, spends basically the last week of his life walking around trying to make people mad, trying to get the authorities to be angry with him. he had sort of up until this point in mark's gospel had sort of coasted um you know causing trouble but not causing enough trouble to make it worth politically and socially the the amount of pain it would cause the religious authorities to to arrest him right so this week he goes around and basically in their face says you know you're bad you're bad okay (laughs) and so um he tells this parable to them and often Jesus' parables are maybe a little hidden or they have a twisted meaning to them. This one is a very, very thinly veiled metaphor. It's like if you've ever watched a movie that's a, like, it's supposed to be like a, a fantasy story, but you very clearly understand that it's talking about a modern political situation, right? This is the same idea that uh, Jesus is using a story to very clearly state what the problem is. And the problem in Jesus's eyes is that ever since the kings came about, the problem, um, ever since the kings became in charge of Israel, the people of Israel have drifted farther and farther and farther away from who they were called to be. To the point where they were exiled, they were punished because they were drifting farther and farther away. They'd gotten to the point where God no longer saw anything of value. Now God promised after the flood, not to destroy the entire earth ever again. And so God's only way of punishing them was to tar- was basically to target specifically the people who were causing the problem. And they learned, like many people do, after the exile, and they got better for a little while. And then slowly, they got corrupted again. They got corrupted by power, corrupted by the pressure of society, corrupted by um, an adherence to tradition over and above compassion and identity and community needs. And Jesus says, you have not listened to any of the prophets God has sent to this point. And so God finally sent the most valuable of all the prophets, his son, Jesus, and you're going to reject him too. And I wonder how many times in our lives do we ignore prophets? Do we ignore the voices of those who challenge us to see the world differently? How often do we ignore the voices of those who disagree with us, who have a different world world view, and we just ignore them because it doesn't fit into our worldview? And so we treat them like trash, and we beat them up, and we throw them out. God's community includes all people, all voices, all attitudes, even the ones we don't like, 
even the people that we don't maybe like. How often do we beat them up and throw them out instead of incorporating them into our vineyard? <laughs>